all have choices in our lives. Some of these choices may seem insignificant, like what you have for lunch, what clothes you wear, but some choices can be life-changing, like who you'll marry or where you go to college. And sometimes these choices are one and the same. Sometimes choices come with the cost. Sometimes choices require facing down the demons of the world. And sometimes these choices require facing down the demons of one's soul. But it is these choices that can change the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the type of intro I would write for a show that actually took the themes of choices seriously. So, pretty much the opposite of what I'm actually reviewing. My Mental Choices Are Completely Interfering With My School Romantic Comedy is a show that takes a cliche and tosses a twist to it, but then just calls it a day. Of course, a show doesn't have to be groundbreaking to be a good show. Actually, in some ways, this show is quite special, at least on a personal level. This is the first single core anime I watched when it was airing. Actually, it might be the first single core anime I ever saw. Before I finally saw Mental Choices, I was used to these long-running shows like Naruto, Bleach, Fairy Tale, you know the drill. Or at least things over 25 episodes like Death Note, FMA, Soul Eater, etc. Right before Mental Choices started airing, Attack on Titan finished its first season with only 24 episodes, which I just found completely unbelievable. I thought it would go like for 50 or 100 or whatever. And then when Mental Choices finally ended after only 10 episodes, I thought this was impossible. It was crazy. Like, why are these new shows ending after so few episodes? And and I learned that, oh wait, this is actually really common. Most shows only last like 12 episodes or so. But enough about the history of me and anime. Let's just get on with this review. Mental Choices, which I'm going to call this show instead of that absurdly long title, is a high school etchy harem. But to avoid being completely generic, its twist is that the main guy is played by absolute choice. Occasionally, a voice will come in his head that will tell him to choose between two things that he either has to say, do, or have happen to him. Normally, one choice is extremely bad and likely humiliating, and the second choice is even worse. There are also some girls he goes to school with that all have some feelings for him, and maybe he has some feelings for them, and I'm sure you know where this is going. The main thing that drew me into the story was its comedy. The choices are so crazy that they lead to some great situations, though I also enjoyed some of the more romantic moments of the show as well. It was interesting seeing all the different characters in their stories. The show is very over the top, and this made me love it. It felt like it was parodying a lot of the normal edgy harem cliches. Although I do wish the comedy ended up not focusing so much on etchy humor and could do some other stuff instead of just being that. Sure, it was funny at first, but the jokes did get old before long. Another thing I liked was how unique Absolute Choice was. It added a level of storytelling just beyond the harem aspects, and I actually enjoyed that more than the romance. Unfortunately, the show did not finish the story, instead leaving pretty much everything open-ended. It didn't feel bad for a single season, but it's been two years and no sign of season two, which really hurts how much I like the show. We did get an OVA, which was basically a fun parody of visual novels, and it ended with a brilliant reference to one of the most well-known visual novel adaptations out there. But again, the OVA did nothing to conclude the show, and basically said we need season two even more, which again, no season two that I know of. Maybe this will change before I upload the review. It's happened before. Or maybe this will be like how Bones is making origami after I told them they needed season two. So maybe if I tell them that they should make a second season of this, I'll do it. Hear that die made you? Make a second season, be like Bones, be smart, make it, I'll be happy, and then I'll review that one too. Got it? Okay. Anyway, the characters are pretty much what you would expect from a show like this. You have a mostly normal main character with a good heart, a number of quirky females that surround him and have feelings for him to some degree. Some of the girls are a bit unique, which does help things, but most of them we've seen in some way before. The art style for the show is very bright and colorful, and that really adds to the comedic tone of the whole thing. The animation itself isn't that great, but I didn't find it to be so bad out of the way, so it's okay, I won't complain about it. The soundtrack for the show isn't anything that stood out to me when watching it, and listening to some of the tracks on their own, it again wasn't anything that great. The ending song was nice, so I did like that one, but other than that, it's nothing special. It was decent enough to not hurt the show and add background music when needed to, but yeah, that's about all. This is one of those shows that tried to just be something fun, and for the most part, it succeeded. It took some of the cliches of the harem genre, threw some twists in, and then took some other cliches to the extreme to parody them, and that was enough. The humor may not be for everyone, but if you like parodies or otherwise absurd shows, you'll probably at least enjoy this. Unfortunately, the lack of an ending really does hurt the show, and while it may be a fun watch, I find it hard to recommend shows that are unfinished unless you do something really special, which this one doesn't. So we move on to the final score. I give my mental choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy an overall score of a 5.53 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. It may be unfinished and nothing all that special, but it was still a fun show with some unique concepts, so I can't say it's skip entirely, but it's also not something you should go watch right away unless this sounds really amazing to you, in which case, just go whatever. For recommendations, let's go with Tommy Galaxy. 
mainly because I was going to review Tatami instead of Mental Choices, but the episodes I wanted to get clips from are taking forever to download, and I've been downloading them for, uh, let's see, uh, wait, it's, oh, it's done downloading. Okay, expect a review of Tatami soon, like, by my definition, soon. Anyway, another reason I could recommend it here, which is actually makes some sense, is that they both deal with the themes of choices, though Tatami goes in a completely different direction with it, so yeah. I would also recommend the current airing show, Actually I Am. It's a high school harem similar to Mental Choice in some ways. It may be cliche at times, but I love the absurd comedy along with the moments where we see the bonds forming between the main couple. So yeah, go watch that if you like romantic comedies. And that concludes my review. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my sister who has like 18 YouTube accounts for recommending I review this. And it was fun. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later.